Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott, and it's time for a monthly recap, and what a month. I feel like I've sort of been in a creative slump as far as these videos go, but my collecting has been a ton of fun. I've got a ton to go over, and so much so that I'm actually gonna split this into two videos, and uh, this video will have my VRs and a shout out. And the next video will cover all of my April pickups and the Strongsville so show. So be sure to check that one out. So show, so show. First things first, Mr. Fisher Bike wants to know why we watch what we watch and why we collect what we collect. I am subscribed to over 900 channels and that's completely ridiculous. So obviously I can't watch all the videos in my feed, but I try to watch as much as I can. I do try to prioritize by watching my best friend's videos before anything else. As far as getting me to click otherwise, if your video has something to do with my immediate interest, I'll obviously check it out. Uh, good thumbnails and titles are important. They're clean, clear, and consistent. Uh, you're definitely get, gonna get my attention if you put a Bob Feller or an Al Rosen or a Don Mossy in your thumbnail. I will always click on those videos. And uh, once you reel me in, I think it helps if you keep things moving, you know, be enthusiastic and maybe tell some sort of story. If you're genuinely excited about something, you're gonna make me genuinely excited about that thing. But if you yammer on for 20 minutes about a 1988 Donruss Kevin Elster, I'm probably not gonna keep watching. No offense to Kevin Elster. Why I collect what I collect. Okay, when I was a kid, my little shoebox collection was actually a lot more diverse than it is now. I collected modern and vintage, and I didn't have focus on any one team like I do today. But at the same time, there wasn't eBay, and I didn't have the budget that I do today. So I just kind of collected what was available to me. And I'm in the position now to collect exactly what I want to collect. So I have a lot sharper focus on my favorite baseball team. And those cards I collected as a kid did not put me through college like I thought they would. So again, I put more weight on how happy a card makes me rather than what kind of investment it is. I do learn a lot and I'm heavily influenced by my YouTube collecting buddies, but at the same time, I don't need Mickey Mantles and Mike Trouts because I just don't connect as much to those guys that don't wear Cleveland uniforms. Blue Jacket 66 came up with this and Silver Jackify just did the same kind of thing earlier this week and I thought it was a really fun idea. It's not a contest or anything, but these are the top 10 cards that I would want that other YouTubers have. Uh, Return to Collecting is doing a VR giveaway adopting this idea, but for his, uh, they don't have to be YouTuber cards. So this could be an entry for that, but I was planning on doing this anyway and I'm talking too much. Okay, number 10, Bowman 53's 53 Bowman Luke Easter. Not a terribly expensive or rare card, but I've been looking for a nicely centered one of these in maybe a PSA 5 for a couple of years now, and I just haven't found the right one, and Alex's checks all the boxes. Number nine, a collector's dream, 1903 E107 Earl Moore. And you're like, who? But it's a Naps player from a really, really tough set, and when Orlando showed it off, he said that I'd be jealous, and I was. Number eight, vintage oddball cards, E93 Addy Joss. My biggest complaint about the T206 set is all the yellow backgrounds, but Rick's candy card Addy is an alternative to that with that gorgeous candy red background. It's just so cool. Number seven, Chris from Missouri's 49 Bowman Larry Doby. Now I first met Chris at the National right before he started making videos and we were chatting at a hotel bar and he shows me this absolutely stunning Larry Doby rookie and I nearly fell off my bar stool. This is a card that's been on my radar for a little while and his is really nice. Number six, the Mangini Collections T205 Cy Young. Uh, when prepping for this, I remember him showing off his T205s, and I was really hoping that he had the Addy Joss, but he didn't. But that's all right, because I wouldn't kick the Cy Young out of bed. And that just sounded really weird, I'm sorry. Number five, the chosen roster autographed Red Heart Al Rosen. My Red Heart Al Rosen is in my personal top ten. It's such a cool card, but to have an autographed one, that's just amazeballs. Number four, Diamond Yard Sports Cards 67 Venezuelan Satchel Page. In the same video, George showed his Venezuelan Satchel Page and his PSA 848 Satchel Page Picture Pack. And I would love either of those, but I don't believe I've ever seen the Venezuelan in person. And the picture packs are a little easier to find, not in such a high grade, but I'm not that picky. 
Number three, this one's a little bit of a stretch, but Dr. Beckett said that he had the complete 49 leaf set at one point and that the satchel page is one of his favorites, but he didn't show it. And if I'm not mistaken, he even said that he had two of them, uh, but that's a card that's so expensive that I have no expectations to ever own that one. Number two, G's Mikey's 1916 M101-5 Ray Chapman. Another really tough card that I've never seen in person and a big, big part of Cleveland baseball history. Even ripped in half and taped back together like Mikey's, I'd be beyond thrilled to own a Ray Chapman card. Number one, Don's Field of Dreams 49 Bowman Satchel Page. Are there better 49 Bowman Satchels out there? Yes. Is the card hard to find? Not really. But Don is constantly texting me pictures of his 49 Satchel, and if I had his, then he'd stop rubbing it in that I don't have one. So I don't really want to say that I'm jealous of these cards. I'm happy for these guys that they have such awesome cards. I think the point is that these are the cards that I really appreciate. And maybe someday I'll have a couple of them. But in the meantime, I can live vicariously through my YouTube friends. Since I've got the TV graphic going, I thought I'd experiment with a new segment where I'd give a little shout out to a channel just because. So I'd like to give a little plug to Signs of the Pastime. Hugo just started making videos and he's doing a fantastic job. His videos are peppy and funny and well edited and very entertaining. He takes you on adventures around Florida and he shows off his autographed cards out in the wild. And a lot of times he ends up eating some amazing food and you can really tell he's having a blast and I hope he keeps it up. Good job, Hugo. Go check him out. And yeah. So that's it for this video. I'll go over my April pickups and the Strongsville show in my next video tomorrow. Thanks to Mr. Fisherbike. Thanks to Dave at Blue Jacket 66 and Joe at Silver Jackify for the great idea. Again, that's not a giveaway. It's just a cool idea. And go check out Signs of the Pastime. And we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, with pickups. Love your hobby and make it unique to you.